Welcome to The Grind, a Respawn Aim Fire series brought to you by Affable Idiots. I am Holden DePardo, and I'm here with Chad Michael Innes. Chad, what would you like to say about your wonderful self? I would like to say that Pocahontas is an overrated movie, and I am not inviting people to argue with me about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Coming up in a future episode of The Grind, we'll have a deep dive into why <laughs> Pocahontas is an underrated movie. But overrated. for the first episode... Overrated. Honestly, Sorry, overrated. overrated. I misspoke. <laughs> but for the first episode today, we'll be discussing the kind of rumored upcoming Switch update. There's been a lot of talk about it being a potential pro unit, um, and we're, we're basically going to talk about why we think it's going to be a replacement to the current Switch as opposed to a third tier um, to the Switch. So there have been rumors going around for a long time now, and a lot of these rumors, at least in the headlines that it gets discussed, gets talked about as a Pro Switch or Nintendo Switch Pro, which kind of brings into mind like iPhone 12 Pro or PS4 Pro, which is this kind of new tier device that we hadn't had before. Like we had PS4, then they had PS4 Pro, but they kept around the original like PS4, but in, like a slimmer version to like kind of keep those two separate tiers iphone 12 pro you get the idea um but i th that's not necessarily the case of the switch i don't think and so we're going to be breaking down essentially the rumors that led up to the switch pro to kind of get an understanding of w what we know about the switch pro from these rumors and we'll be jumping into nintendo and nvidia's business practices to see if that's indicative of what they would do and then finally we'll just be pulling up quotes from nintendo which kind of point to where they see switch going in the future so to start off here chad if you want to switch over we're going to switch over to our visual only experience here on youtube.com slash us us so this is the first rumor right here of nintendo switch having an upgraded unit this is actually back from march 2018 so these rumors of a new switch had been around for a while um the story here is that there was a firmware update the 5.0 firmware up, um, update that was data mined and in there they found references to a new nvidia processor so at the time back in 2017 and in the original switch they were using the codenamed um, t210 version of nvidia's tegra chip which is just known as the tegra x1 but there were rumors, or not even rumors at that point, it was a data mine, so it was pretty much legit at that point, um, that there was a T214 chip um, referenced in the data mine. So that was kind of predicted to be this new upgraded version of the Switch. Um, it ended up turning into the 2019 kind of marginal nameless update that's still just Nintendo Switch. That's just the battery improvements, really. Um, and that was to keep it in line with the Switch Lite, which also had that same processor in it. So that wasn't a new Switch by any means, but it was a marginal improvement to the battery. Actually, it was kind of a sizable battery improvement, yeah, actually. I, it, was like, it was like 50 or 60% extra battery life. Yeah, yeah. You know what else I and, think is interesting that I just kind of put together? in This this data mine was back in early 2018, like March 2018. Yeah. But we didn't see that model for another almost year and a half. Yeah, it, I've kind of noticed there's a trend of like a year and a half to two years before something would happen, there would be a rumor that nails it completely. So like right after the Switch was announced, or not announced, but released, there was talk of a Switch Lite. And there was mm. rumors of a Nintendo Switch portable only version of the Switch. So it's like, and it was like two years before we had seen that. So that's kind of seems to be like a trend. And we'll actually see that trend kind of come up here as well. Because in April of 2019, two years before now... <laughs> Um, there were rumors of a upgraded Pro uh, Switch that could, or at least just a better Switch that the headline calls the Switch Pro. Um, but what's notable here is that the Nikai who kind of made the claim, they said that there's going to be a smaller budget-focused model, which is the Switch Lite that was coming out in a few months after this uh, this leak, but also there's going to be a next-generation model to replace the current one available. Now, this could have been a reference to that t214 version or it could have been a reference to the switch you know kind of pros we know now um but ultimately it's kind of continuing this trend of like the rumor will say next generation model but then the headline will say switch pro and i think it's just because it's easier to put switch pro in the headline people get a general idea of what switch pro means more powerful um but it i it, it's kind of caused this you know third tier approach i mean many people's uh, opinion so anyway Moving on, um, more rumors in 2020 um, from 
um, in this case, I, IGN, who kind of compiled reports um, from like Digi Times and past rumors from um, Takashi at the Wall Street Journal talking about kind of new switch models, as well as analysts like this one guy, what was his name? Sirkan Tom Toto, who is rumor um, predicting that his Switch Pro would be coming out in 2020. So just kind of continuing that kind of conversation. Um, then later on in October of 2020, we kind of got our first reference to Super Switch. I clicked on it again. And I didn't mean to. The first thing I clicked on it, and this time I clicked on it, it was destined to happen, I guess. The Super Switch was talked about or kind of referenced. I don't think this guy is necessarily, like, claiming as an insider that it's going to be switch, uh, a Super Switch. But it's kind of the first time we'd heard that name. And it's been repeated since as well, which I think is probably a more likely name for it. I think it's more a little bit more likely than Pro. Because, as you mentioned, you know, Pro gives the illusion that it's going to be, like, for Pro users, professional users, and it's not a yeah. professional gaming console, as you mentioned. But Super has, you know, Super Nintendo, it has the Super Mario Bros. as like, the next version mm-hmm. of Mario Bros. Yeah. Um, Super Game Boy for playing them on your Super Nintendo, all that kind of fun stuff. But it's also something that we really haven't used since the yeah. 90s, that, that Super moniker, aside from Super Mario Bros. It sounds better, too. Super Switch. I kind of yeah. like the way that sounds. That sounds kind of cool. Um, and then this year, we kind of got our most recent rumors, um, which points to, this is also from IGN, uh, which points to the 4K output, again, which we've kind of been hearing for the past few years now, a uh, larger screen, and that larger screen specifically is going to come from Samsung, and it's going to have a 7-inch, um, 720p OLED panel. One note on the 720p, I think people are kind of upset about that. I don't care. On that size device, I think it's fine. Yeah, 7-inch tablet, it's it's 720p is going to be totally fine, and it also will allow you to have respectable battery life in yeah. uh, in that handheld that size. Yeah. Like 1080p would have been cool, but like it would never have a 4K screen on, on the handheld. It'd be such a waste. Right. <laughs> never, never going to happen. Um, to support the 4K stuff, we have a rumor here from 15 days ago, and this is that there's going to be a new chip that NVIDIA is going to be putting in this new Switch. Um, and the reason for that is something called DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling. It's basically just a way of upping the resolution uh, without losing quality through an AI process. But it requires something called tensor cores, which are specific hardware that NVIDIA puts on their chips. It actually will save performance overall, but you need to have that hardware there in order to save the performance. So they would need a new chip for that. So that's kind of rumored to um, to be there. And that's kind of where we're at with the Switch Pro rumors right now. So I think like kind of the question is, like, does all of this add up to it being a third tier? Um I mean, this could still, at this point, still, based on the rumors here, it could still go third tier. When you say third tier, you specifically mean, are we going to have Switch Lite, Switch, and Super Switch all for sale at the same time? Yeah, exactly. Is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. I think it'll just be, like, Super Switch and Switch Lite. So, we want to talk about just basically how Nintendo has handled these new upgrades to their products in the past. So the obvious kind of two that we know about are our most recent ones are new Nintendo 3DS and the Nintendo DSi are kind of the two most recent ones. Um, but a lot of these trends actually carry over to the, even the Game Boy SP versus the Game Boy Advanced. Um, but essentially with both the DS and the 3DS, they released a product and then four years later, there was a new version of the product. And that new version just replaced the old version. But there are some caveats to this. So the first is that when Nintendo 3DS XL came out, you can see here, it is $199. At the time that it was it came out, this was back in February 2015, at the time that it came out, the 3DS was also, sorry, the 3DS XL was also $200. So they were just replacing it at the same exact price point. But they did keep around the 3DS XL for a little while. I do think it's weird that here um, they show off the them like side by side. I get this is January 14th, so technically it hadn't been released yet. But it was just funny they have them like side by side. Like who would buy the old one when they <laughs> right. advertise the new one right above it? But anyway, so using Wayback Machine, jumping on the same page to November 2015, we can see they have the 3DS XL, of course, the new 3DS XL at $200. Um, they have some other variants of it, including now they afterwards released the new 3DS, the Animal Crossing version, the smaller one. Um, 
but they do actually still have the 3ds xl around it's cheaper and i think and i don't necessarily have a source for this but i'd imagine it was just selling off inventory that they still had as opposed to like wanting to keep this around as a cheaper option because they already had the cheaper option in the new 3ds as well as the 2ds which they offer as a cheaper option so they don't really they didn't have to have this like cheaper version of the product around now contrasting with that um Oh, and to support that too, this is in April of 2016, so a little more than a year after the new 3DS XL was released, and they just stopped selling the, the old 3DS. So, like, it was probably just to get rid of supplies. The Nintendo DS had a slightly different um, kind of trajectory there. When they introduced the DSi, it was released at the same price point that Nintendo DS was being sold at. And, of course, they had the DSi XL, which was a little bit more expensive. That's because it's bigger. Um, and then the DS Lite, they kept around at a lower price point. And they kept it around for the entirety of the life cycle of the DS, um, and even a little bit into the 3DS life cycle. You can see here this is May 18th, 2012. So this is about a year and, and some change after the 3DS had come out. And then literally a few days after this, they stopped selling the DS Lite, and they just kept the DS, um, the DSi. Now... The DS, they did keep around the old version and just made it cheaper. The distinction that I want to draw between how new DS was, new, new 3DS was handled versus how DSi was handled is by the time the, 3D, the new Nintendo 3DS came out, the 2DS was already out. And because the 2DS was out, they already had a cheaper option. They didn't need to bring the 3DS down to a lower price point because they already had something more affordable at the time, whereas DS didn't have that. But... In both cases, they introduced the DSi and the, and the new 3DS at the same price points that they released the older model at. Now, and for the record, the the 3DS we know a little bit more powerful. It added the um, the C stick on it as well. The DSi yeah. it added the camera, right? And what else did it add? It added the um, the the DS Wear store where you could kind of buy small downloadable ah, right. games. Yeah, so it had some advantage there as well. And I think it so was that's a the little idea bit more of the upgrade powerful. between the two. Yeah, so it's like an upgrade between the two there, yeah. Um, it is possible that they'll keep around the new Nintendo new Nintendo Switch, that they'll keep around the regular Switch, maybe at like $50 off or something like that while they get rid of inventory. I think that's that's possible. It's also possible, too, just to kind of play devil's advocate um, for the position we're making here, that they want to offer a cheaper hybrid option. And that the DS Lite, maybe, yeah, that's cheaper, but they still want to have a cheaper hybrid option as well. That's also possible, I think. So moving on to kind of NVIDIA's practices, um, there was a rumor earlier this year that NVIDIA was going to st um, stop making the Tegra X1 Plus chip. And that would essentially force Nintendo to release the Switch with, increased, with, an, uh, with a newer NVIDIA chip. It is still just a rumor, but... I wanted to break down kind of how how NVIDIA has handled their past graphics cards. Yeah, I think that's so, important context. Like, it, obviously, game consoles are something that are meant to keep around for a, a while. So yeah. how do how do these chip manufacturers deal with that? So let's take a look at NVIDIA. I feel like you can make a good comparison with their desktop chip. So looking at, at this here, if you go to NVIDIA's store, they only sell their own like processors at like an Nvidia made processor is the only the 30 series. So you can only get a 30 series, you cannot buy a 20 series, a 16 series, a 10 series, a 7 series. You can't buy any of their older processors specifically Nvidia made. But here's something that I learned that I did not know about before looking into this is that Nvidia will sell their chip to other manufacturers and the other manufacturers will package that chip with their own casing, their own fans, their own memory, um, and that kind of stuff. So if you buy from a third party, you can still get an NVIDIA chip and you can get an older one as well. So here's a company, PNY. Um, they do offer, as you can see, like the 30 series. Um, but as you can see too, like they have a single fan version, they have a three fan version. So you can kind of get it a little bit more tailored for what your needs might be. But scrolling down, you'll see they do in fact still offer the 16 series and even offer the 20 series as well. So you can still buy an older NVIDIA chip, but you have to kind of buy through a third party. NVIDIA kind of has a cutoff for their own stuff. 
And it's the same thing with, you know, with Aces here. You can get a 16 series through them. There are even some rare cases where you can get a 7 series, but I'm convinced that those are used or just never sold and Amazon still has them listed for some reason. Um, so the point here is that the 16 series came out in 2019. The 20 series came out in 2018. I know that doesn't make any sense because 16 <laughs> you think would come before, but that's the way it works. Um, so they keep their chips around for a handful of years and then cut them off. So what does this mean for um, for the Tegra chips? So looking here, this is just Wikipedia, Tegra X1. Uh, you can see there's a switch. And when it comes to the T210 chip, which is the one that was in the original switch, that came out in 2015. It's a really old chip. Like, that's six years old at this point. And then you look at their 214 chip, which, as we kind of talked about earlier, is a marginally improved version, but isn't really any more powerful. It's just more efficient. And that came out in 2019. So the point is, like, these are kind of, like, this is past the cutoff. I think it's fair here to use the 2015 date, since the 2019 version is not really a huge difference. This is way past NVIDIA's typical cutoff for their chips. So I think that's one thing to kind of note with NVIDIA. Here's the other thing that I think is really important with NVIDIA. That is that they are buying ARM for $40 billion. ARM is the, um, it basically handles mobile processors almost across the board. So like take Apple, for example, who does make their own chips, but they get their chips from ARM and basically get like an instruction set of like, of of an ARM chip and then Apple can tailor that instruction set however they want. Like think Legos, you get your Lego set, you know, Lego will tell you you can do this with it, but you can also do a million other things with that. It Lego might set. tell you to make a Chewbacca, but you make a big poop emoji because they're the same color. Exactly, exactly. You have that power. Apple has that power to make a poop emoji out of <laughs> ARM chips if they want to. And Qualcomm also is a customer of ARM. The point is, like, they have Customers. they have huge support. They have huge support, and they are backed heavily um, in the the industry. And NVIDIA is about to buy them. So essentially, NVIDIA is about to be put in a situation where Nintendo, who's using a 2015 processor, is their primary mobile customer. And now they're about, Nintendo is about to be dwarfed by Apple and Qualcomm and many other companies, like Google's rumors to be working on their own processor um, based on ARM. They're going to be dwarfed. And what is NVIDIA going to prioritize? Are they going to prioritize making a 2015 chip? Or are they going to prioritize wanting to make chips for these new, bigger customers that, that they'll be working with? So it kind of makes sense that NVIDIA would say, hey, Nintendo, we really can't manufacture just this one chip for you at a small scale compared to the scale we're doing elsewhere. We got to size it up. You got to put a new chip in there. Um, and considering you know, how affordable pro uh, mobile processors are nowadays, I don't think it'd even be a huge hit for Nintendo cost-wise. So kind of going back to the original rumor, is NVIDIA going to discontinue their chips? I think it makes sense. It's not, it's not, we can know for certain, but I think it's certainly plausible. The only thing that would kind of change that is that the deal within uh, ARM has not gone through yet. A matter of fact, Qualcomm is asking regulators to not allow it. Um, so there is a chance that this might not go through. If it does, then I think this makes sense that they would discontinue the X1 Plus and the X1 chips. So, so far, we've looked at, yeah. you know, is it going to be a third model? What is Nintendo's history with that kind of stuff with, with mobile handhelds? We've looked at, like, hey, NVIDIA is probably looking to say, I don't want to make this old-ass chip anymore. Let's talk upgrades. Yeah. And now, what does Nintendo think about the future of the Switch? This is a interview with Doug Bowser, who is the CEO or CEO or president, the president um, of Nintendo of president America. Of Nintendo America, yeah. So this is an interview we did back in December 2020. So very very recent, and it's a lot about like Animal Crossing and like what COVID was like, that kind of stuff. But the interviewer at Polygon did not let up on the Switch Pro and asked incessantly about the Switch Pro. I'm going to move up to one quote in particular here, but the kind of the crux of what he was saying, uh, what Doug Bowser's kind of said about a new version of the Switch is that 
they are always looking at new hardware or new technology, whether it's for like the current devices they have or for future devices. Um, but they feel really strong about the momentum that the Switch and the Switch Lite currently has right now. They also kind of view that they're at the midpoint cycle of their um, of their hardware, uh, meaning that there's probably about like 2023, 2024, we'll see, or sorry, 2024, 2025, we'll see the um, the next like true generation of Switch, like Switch Two. Um, so he also threw in there too that because they've been so successful that they have so much momentum that it kind of gives them f flexibility to focus on their existing form factors. And the Polygon interviewer kind of stressed this and he said, you know, because of the success of the Switch, the Switch Lite, does that buy you time um, with hardware? If it wasn't doing as well, would you need to refresh sooner? And so Doug Bowser just responded. He said, it does allow us to manage the life cycle differently, I would say. I think that's the easiest way to put it. And this is the important part here. Right now, with the momentum that we have, our focus will be on existing form factors. I think there's a few ways to read into this. Um, form factors could mean like we're not releasing a set top box. We're not going to release like a new physical form of the Switch. I think another version of that is also we're not going to be releasing different tiers of this product. The current tiers are working really well for us, and they don't want to add to that. That's how I read into that, at least. That's kind of what I took from it. Yeah, I think so too. It's, and it it when they say focusing on existing form factors, I think that also allows them to talk about like um, preservation of accessories from one generation to the next. If they were to yeah. think about the successor as well as games and experiences without having to do things like with Skyward Sword coming out, like figuring out how the hell do we go from a Wiimote <laughs> to a handheld switch? Yeah. And the final piece of information here is from a, uh, a Q&A with investors with the Nintendo president, overall Nintendo, uh, Furukawa. Um, and he said, I'm actually going to read uh, two quotes here. He said, um, moving on to the future expansion of the installed base, we believe that as the number of Nintendo Switch users continues to grow, this will also drive increasing demand for a second system among the Nintendo Switch family of systems. Basically, what saying is that they are looking to get more people to buy multiple switches, like families to buy multiple switches. If you're trying to expand your, you know, your user base and trying to get people to buy multiple of these, usually making a more expensive version is not the best way to do that. Generally, you would want to offer the same price, better value, or something more affordable. If you go, you're not going to convince people to say, "Hey, you already have this thing. Spend more money and get a slightly better version of it." Isn't that likely? So there I will feel be like dummies this... like me that will do it, but I think you're right for the mass audiences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for mass audiences. Oh, I would 100 if they'd released a $400 Switch Pro and it was like metal alloy and like you know way better controls. Like it was like the elite you know controller of the Switch. Like I would 100 percent buy that absolutely. But we are not normal customers. <laughs> <laughs> So the idea here is that Nintendo seems to be happy with what they currently have and that they want to get people to buy more Switches, not necessarily... They want the same people to buy more Switches. They don't necessarily want new people who haven't bought Switch before to buy Switches. So all this kind of wrapped up um, in kind of in conclusion. Um, it seems like the pro moniker being used for Switch was really just reserved for discussing rumors and headlines and in discussions like this kind of podcast right here. Um, but not necessarily to indicate there's a really a third tier pro version of the Switch that's being offered. Nintendo in the past um, doesn't release pro versions of their portable hardware. They'll generally just release a better version at the same price point. Um, NVIDIA may be forcing Nintendo to upgrade Switch hardware by ceasing production of the current graphics chips used by Switch, which would then just make it impossible for Nintendo to make a third tier. And finally, Nintendo's own financial statements about the future of Switch don't indicate a desire for a third tier. In fact, it suggests they're happy with the current lineup. And that is why there is no Switch Pro, but there's still very likely to be a new Switch to expect this year. I think I'm going to add one more piece of context to this last thing you mentioned about um, wanting to have multiple switches per family yeah. or or get people to buy more switches. It actually it reminds me of when their first year they started selling the dockless switch in Japan yeah. for that same reason because they wanted to have multiple switches per family so people could have like kids could have their own switches uh, and they had mentioned that was part of their strategy there too with Switch Lite as well so. 
it's something that they're kind of sticking to throughout the whole four years of their life cycle so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and maybe they could do that too, where like they release the Super Switch, and then they offer one that's fifty bucks less and doesn't have the dock included. So they do have that kind of cheaper hybrid option for families who might want that. Absolutely, there's a, definitely ways they could go about this. My big question too is, if Nvidia is getting rid of the chips. What does that mean for the Switch Lite? Is the Switch Lite also going to see a lot of these upgrades? But like, what would the benefit really be if it can't plug into a TV? Or is this a version of Switch Lite that could plug into a TV to get 4K? Like, who who knows at that point? But it definitely does kind of put the the Switch Lite into question too. Yeah, that's a really interesting caveat. I hadn't thought about what happens with that. Yeah, I wonder if it's it's something that they could take like existing inventory. And just say, all right, we're going to funnel this all into the Switch Lite until we decide to kill it off. Until so yeah. we no longer have these chips and then we no longer sell Switch Lite. Uh, I don't know. Similar yeah. to kind of what they were doing with the 2DS, right? The the Wedge 2DS. Like, yeah. Eventually, they're just like, oh, we're just going to kill off this product even though we just introduced it not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll see. Nintendo's a weird, unpredictable company sometimes. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> 2021 will be an interesting year. More than anything, though, I just want Zelda. I just want Breath of the Wild too. That's that's the main <laughs> that's the main issue at hand here. All right. Well, that was the first episode of the grind. We look forward to doing this on YouTube right here every two weeks. So come back in two weeks, and we will have another one for you. If you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, you totally disagree with us, sh- shout out in the comments. <laughs> All civil yep. discourse is appreciated. Uh, Yeah, thanks for joining. Have a good one. Bye.